What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Game 3 of the It's Gosu Razor Mini Madness Grand Finals between DK and Tong Fu. And Tong Fu really needs to get their uh, stuff together if they want to stay in this tournament. They are down 0-2 in this Grand Finals series, and this is the best out of 5. So if DK wins the next game, they go home with a whopping prize of $500, but more importantly, they get the confidence and momentum going into International 2. And with me, as always, is Shred Kid. So, ready to get this going? Absolutely, let's go. Alright, 3 Two, one, go. So, DK has pretty much looked on top of their game this tournament. They haven't dropped a single game, and it's really been refreshing and impressive to watch because DK, uh, even though they struggled in the first part of 2011, there was never a do more dominant team in Dota 1 than DK last year. So I'm personally pretty excited to see DK looking on tip-top shape. You're right. It's really great to see him on point. And it's not even that Tong has been playing bad in this series. It's just... DK has been playing really, really well. And I think if Tong Fu wants to take this game, they're absolutely going to have to step it up, you know, bring that A-plus game to take down DK. Yeah, and keep in mind, this is... Uh, I don't think these teams are holding anything back, even though I said going into this tournament, all right, it's going to be a lot of the mind games and holding back secret strategies that they might be going. But personally, I don't think uh, either team is holding anything back. Maybe Tong Fu is letting DK get too many junglers, but... Uh, we'll see if they decide to ban out okay, some long DD heroes, bad. and they decide to ban out the Holy Knight, so a pretty smart first ban by Tong Fu. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Nobody wants to play against Chen. But, um, I think that, like you said, both of these teams are going hard in this tournament. I mean, DK revealed the strat where they used Undying. Like, they showed that that's a thing for them before the International, so it looks like they're really prioritizing this this win right here, so... We see a standard Naga ban coming out, followed by a Furion ban. Uh, Lycan's still in the pool, so Tongfu will have to ban that out if they don't want DK to get it. But That's true. And it'll be interesting to see uh, if Leshak will be picked or banned this series, because Tongfu's picked him twice, and they haven't done very well with him. He hasn't. He got a decent amount of farm last game, but DK was just able to out-tank him and focus him down. So Dark Seer is going to be the final ban, so uh, Tongfu most likely going to try to ban that like in if not, then DK is most likely going to pick it up for themselves. But then uh, DK is left with Enchantress as well, so a lot of difficult options for Tongfu to decide who to ban. Well, if you leave Lycan in the pool, you can take Enchantress for yourself and just kind of send Enchantress at them in the jungle and try to mess with Lycan's farm. But of course, DK can respond by laning Lycan. And I've seen them do that so many times that I really wouldn't be surprised if they did it if Tongfu left Enchantress and DK in the pool. So not sure what Tongfu is going to ban out. I would guess Lycan just because nobody wants to play against him. Okay, and it's going to be Silver. That just makes a lot of sense. They got destroyed by Silver last game. Burning Silver is no joke, and I fully expect DK to pick up Silver right. Or excuse me, Lycan right now. If they don't, I think they'll take Enchantress, but it should be Lycan. Yeah, Lone Druid played by Burning last game. I think he got maybe 16, 17 minute radiance. He got like yeah, a 14 minute. It was like relic. 16, 17 minutes about. Yep. <laughs> it was pretty ridiculous and Burning. It was fast. Yeah, known for his Lone Druid among. A myriad of other hard carries. And Lycanthrope would be a solid first pickup because that means that Tongfu would have to be, uh, either if they don't go for a counter pushing, they might have to be pigeonholed into a Morphling pickup. And Morphling doesn't really get going until uh, around the 20 25 minute mark. So Lycan is the first pickup for DK. So we'll see how Tongfu decides to respond to it. And Tongfu is not really that fond of jungling heroes. They haven't picked Chen or Enchantress in any of these games. Instead, they decide to go with Rubik opening. And we'll see what they pick up next. Well, Rubik makes a lot of sense, just in that he's such a top-tier hero right now, but against the Lycanthrope, he doesn't really do anything. He, he, hasn't, he has no ability, which severely deals with Lycanthrope. It doesn't really matter if you steal any Lycan's moves. Sure, the wolves are kind of nice sometimes, but, you know, it's not great. And the speed on Rubik isn't all that useful, so I don't know. I'm not sure if I like this opening that much, or if I got something else that I'm not seeing. Yeah, I guess they're going for a very flexible. Last, last game was all about, all right, how are they going to lane this? The lineups are so flexible. And Tongfu is going to go with the Leshrac pick, so made third time's a charm. Leshrac, uh, in the first game he was played as a hardcore sport, in the second game he got a pretty good amount of farm. But he, besides pushing down towers, he didn't really do as much as I expected in team fights. So we'll see if Tongfu has a trick up their sleeve to utilize the Shrek to his full potential this round, as Invoker is going to be next pickup. So Super Invoker and Windrunner. So DK getting some solid team fights, some solid pushing, and just has a very versatile lineup this far. Something that interested me most about that exchange right there was the fact that they picked Anti Mage instantly after Invoker and Windrunner were picked. Like they hadn't even thought about it, and they just instantly picked Anti Mage. 
Yeah. Normally that's a mark of a super confident team who already has the picks worked out and they know that the enemy is going to pick them and they just pick their pick right after. But Tongfu has kind of been outpicked a little bit and they've kind of been outplayed. So the fact that they pick somebody up immediately after picks, like they were mash clicking him pretty much, doesn't bode well for them, I think. I think they just wanted to play anti-mage and didn't really care about what DK picked up right there. And Invoker is pretty good against anti-mage. You can control him really well. And, you know, all you need is one shackle from Windrunner to hit anti-mage, and he's going to be shackled for four or five seconds, whatever it is, so. Bei Tongfu is reliving their second game against, uh, our first game up against Orange when Mushu was playing back and throw, <laughs> but Mushu went for Shadow Blade. I don't think DK will go for Shadow Blade in this game. Uh, or at least uh, whoever plays the Lycanthrope, like, probably burning. But yeah, Anti-Mage is one of those characters who does take time to farm up, and Lycanthrope like, is sort of one of those characters that doesn't really let you do that. He just pushes down towers so quickly, and if you can get team fights and split pushing going with the other four heroes, then it's going to be really difficult for, to stop him, especially if he goes for a straight BKB rather than something like a Shadow Blade like Mushi did. So even around the 25 minute mark, uh, Lycanthrope will out DPS and Anti-Mage, as we saw in Orange versus Tongfu in the first game of the semifinals. Yeah, uh, and I think that Anti-Mage might have trouble getting his cleaver up to counter push against a Lycanthrope, or I mean, push on the other side of the map, which is what you want to do against Lycanthrope to begin with. The other component of your team that needs to be in place if you're fighting against a Lycanthrope is you need to be able to manhandle him with your other heroes if you have one carry split pushing. And for right now, I don't think Leshrac and Rubik are capable of handling a Lycanthrope on their own. They're going to need some serious, serious anti lycan measures. And we see a TA ban coming out from DK. I didn't really talk about any of the other bans, but the TA ban is fairly interesting, as I don't think TA is amazing against any of the heroes that they have picked up. So maybe they just don't want the map control from the TA? I'm not sure yet. Yeah, that is pretty interesting. I guess uh, in 4v4 situations, TA is one of the strongest carries, I suppose, just because he can't oh, really yeah, force that could him down. Be it. And of course, spending out the team fight in Tidehunter is quite a good response, but just bringing us back to that Orange versus Tom Fu matchup in Game 1, the appropriate counter that Tom Fu used to hold out against Lycanthrope for a long time was using uh, Moose Invoker versus Lycanthrope until Edge Mage get farmed up, and unfortunately Tom Fu does not have that Invoker this lineup, and another team fight hero being picked up by DK, along with the great pushing capacity is the Enigma. So, pretty solid picks by DK overall, and I'm not really too sure what Tom Fu can do uh, to counter this, what do you think they should go for? Oh, they went for Sanking. I think they need to not get Enigma. Um, I think that the biggest thing that the Enigma pick shows is that DK is extremely confident. Because if you pick an Enigma against a Rubik, you're basically saying, we are going to kill Rubik in the duration of the black hole. Because otherwise he will get your ultimate and he will turn it around on you. So I think that that's really just... It speaks to how confident DK is in this matchup. And yeah, they have... I think four ways of interrupting him with all four of those heroes. But honestly, it's not all about Black Hole. If they use him for pushing, if they use him for stuns. Both teams have a lot of team fight. I think Tong Fu might have a little more team fight early, but DK's got more team fight late, if that makes sense. That's true. And they have one of the most powerful early to mid game carries in the form of Lycan. And just looking at the Tong Fu pickups right now, nothing can go through a BKB Enigma Ultimate. So we'll see what DK decides to do. Uh, right now, Tong Fu, I guess they're probably going to lane... They're probably going to lane Leshrac with Anti-Mage again, I think. I think that seems likely. They might lane Rubik with Anti-Mage. They could even do a Rubik... What it looks like they'll do for me is Sand King, Anti-Mage, Rubik, Tri-Lane. I think. They yeah. might do Leshrac instead, but SK is going to be in the Tri-Lane with him, and another hero will be with him too. And then either Rubik or Leshrac should be solo mid. Yeah, so they definitely still need their offlane hero, so DK is probably thinking long and hard. DK, their lanes are pretty much uh, clear-cut. Invoker, most likely, either going to be soloing mid or soloing the safe lane with Lycanthrope and then jungle. Beastmaster is going to be the offlane. So I guess Invoker safe lane, Windrunner mid, and Beastmaster solo the hard lane? Or maybe it's going to be Beastmaster mid, Windrunner solo the hard lane. This could be a Windrunner support pick, I think. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure. There are so many ways that DK could do it. They could have Lycanthrope mid, even. They could have... Basically, any single one of the heroes on DK could be mid. Enigma probably won't be, but they all could be, you know? Uh, I doubt that Beastmaster or Lycanthrope will be, but my point is, we don't know how they're going to lane it yet. I don't think anybody really could say at this point. And Tong Fu could put SK offlane. I don't think that'll work against an Enigma and a Lycanthrope, because your tower will just get destroyed. 
They'll get two towers in about four to five minutes, so I don't know. Yeah, it'll be ridiculously quick, and if Windrunner is in the offlane, if... Of course, Windrunner will be kept back, but just considering their early game pushing power of Lycanthrope and Enigma, they can push down towers, and then you're going to have to send supports to send to the other one, so Windrunner will get her farm eventually. So, and, of course, when are getting her farm, she can land quite well against a solo anti-mage, and anti-mage isn't one of those heroes who can really just uh, go back and defend versus a Lycanthrope Enigma push in the early game without his battle fairy. So Tongfu, uh, I think they're a little bit in over their heads on this game, as there's just so many stuns, and even a lot of ways that go through BKB. If uh, an anti-mage does get BKB in the late game, Sanking if he gets BKB, Let's track if he gets BKB, there's Roar, there's Black Hole, there's so many disables, there's so much damage, and there's so much range too. Roar, Tornado, Shackle Shot, DK seems to have a top tier lineup with this <laughs> with this setup. Yeah, and I don't like that Broodmother pickup at all, it feels like they were forced into it, in that it's really one of the only viable off lanes left for them. And they have two options right now, Broodmother off lane solo, Safe lane, tri lane, protecting the anti mage and a hero mid, or an offensive tri lane, broodmother, safe lane. And I don't think an offensive tri lane will work necessarily against DK's lineup. And I think if they play it safe, they're just going to get out farmed. Well, not necessarily out farmed, but out controlled by the team fight of DK. So we'll see how this one plays out. So I'll go with DK as we have some pretty interesting people playing different heroes. So uh, definitely not standard. We're going to see Long DD, the support player playing the Beastmaster. So, may you're going to see a support Beastmaster, Jungle Beastmaster. Pretty interesting to see. ROTK is going to be playing the Enigma. Zippo is going to be playing the Windrunner. So, most likely support Windrunner, like you mentioned. Bernie has a Quelling Blade just to his name. is just going to be cutting down trees. He is the Lycanthrow like player. And last but not least, is Super playing that Invoker. Yeah, and on Tong Fu's side, we're going to have Hao playing the Farming Anti. We will have a Woke on the Rubik. We will have Kabu playing his Sand. We're going to have San Sheng playing the Leshrac, and finally, we'll have Mu on his Broodmother. And this looks like it's going to be a support Leshra or support Rubik. Yeah, I mean, I guess it makes the most sense. You'd rather have the early game team fight that Leshrac could provide up against something like an Invoker or an Enigma. And Rubik, despite not getting enough levels to get his null field fully maxed up by the time mid game comes, is still a solid support hero. He can get the nuke, he can get the telekinesis, he can get the spell steal. But I think it's more important that Tongfu gets the damage up on the Lush Rack as soon as possible and get him a little bit tanky. So, uh, it makes a bit more but sense in this case. Things. Yeah, I can kind of understand it. It is important that he gets six, though. Oh, wow. That rune is going to get taken out from right under Burning Wolf's nose, but, uh,. I would like to see a fast level 6 on Rubik, simply because there are so many good things worth stealing from DK. Power Shot, Shackle Shot, Black Hole, Malefice, pretty much anything Invoker throws at you, and Beastmaster Roar. Although Roar is hard to get against a good team. And this is something we don't see very often. Looks like Longadi is going to be playing the Farming Beastmaster, and Zippo is going to be playing the Support Windrunner, like you called. So Longadi is must just be grinning from ear to ear, He's saying, finally I get my chance to farm up and carry up against this brood mother. <laughs> And already an early sentry ward being placed. Was that? No, that was not Moose sentry ward. So Windrunner, once she goes back into the lane, will be able to keep Broodmother back. Because Broodmother, not too strong against uh, anti pushment or anti pushing herself. And meanwhile, mid lane, super with help of ROTK coming in, are just going to be pressuring Rubik and Howe away from that lane. And top lane is just left completely solo. And looks like Kabu is picking up the farm. Yeah, I think that. The way that they're laning it makes a lot of sense because if they saw if they put any one hero on the long lane, I think it would just die. Like against the Leshrac SK, you you just die if you get caught. That's and true. even Windrunner isn't that strong against that lineup. So it looks like they're putting Windrunner mid to kind of just destroy mid lane. They completely sacrifice top lane, but they're gonna win their jungle super hardcore. They're gonna win bot lane. And with Windrunner mid, they're gonna win mid too. So basically, they're sacrificing one lane super hardcore and able to win everything else. Yeah, and even then, Sand King is a very strong hero if he gets his hands up. Blink Dagger Epicenter is definitely nothing to laugh at, but it's not like if you're leaving an anti mage solo where you can get fast battle fairy, and right now, how is just going to have an abysmal time trying to pick up the requisite farm needed? Uh, the only downfall is Super won't be getting all the experience possible, but hey, he's mostly going for Quaswex and just get that early team fight going. Quaswex is probably the build in this case, right? Uh, yeah, I think so too. They don't really have any great setups for E, and if you're going for an E Invoker, you want to be active in other lanes, you want ganks to be happening, and that's not going to happen. They obviously have no one top lane, and there probably isn't going to be any kills on bots, so... 
Yep, as looks like uh, looks like Awoke has switched his lanes. It's going to help out the Broom Rather fight, and he's just going to leave Soul Anti Mage. Anti Mage is going to try to pick as much experience as possible. And I guess the game plan is just get Sanking the farm he can, needs for now. Anti Mage try to get as much experience, and then they're going to probably switch the lanes when possible. Yeah, that's likely, but I don't know. I feel like SK Blink Dagger at the cost of everyone else on your team not having anything isn't really worth it. Yeah, I, I could agree on that. And I think uh, even SK Blink Dagger, he's very, very powerful. But I'd rather have a farm less shot getting maybe an, well, not really early BKB, but just getting an early Bloodstone or something like that. Just to take more constant team fights and defend against the like and throw pushing would be a better choice. But still, Sanking Blink Dagger is. Uh, always worth it. And looks like they are going to switch up the roles. Sanchang is going to be taking the farm, and Kabu is going to be roaming. So, uh, looks like they're just spreading out all the farm. I don't really know if it's, this is the best decision, to be quite honest. I don't know either. A lot of times in SK Latrak lanes, you have them split the farm. Like, somebody farms their mana boots, and then someone else farms their mana boots. And, you know, you go back and forth. But in this situation, I think they should absolutely have a Blink Dagger up on the SK or a Fast Bloodstone up on the last track. One or the other. I think splitting the farm is a mistake because everybody will be out farmed in that scenario. Whereas if you have one hero with a ton of farm, maybe he'll be able to carry you. If that makes any sense. I feel like they're, they're going to need somebody to basically put the team on their back this game and carry them. And right now, Broodmother can't even send a sprite to jungle because, like you said, there's so much uh, presence from the Enigma and the Lycanthrope. So these Broodlings are just being complete fodder for these Wild Axes. Can't even micro them away just because uh, they move a little bit too slow at this point. So even though bottom lane is doing a bit better now that Woke has joined the party, these Spiderlings are just going to give up so much experience and so much gold. And looks like there's going to be a push up top. Let's try pushing with the Edict. And this is, I guess, the best response that Tonkfu can do. Appro apply some early pressure just to get those towers down. Oh, 100%. I was surprised that they didn't do this already, that they waited four full minutes. But the tier, tier, two, tier 1 tower will go down right now. And then they'll move to the Tier 2. Hopefully they'll be able to get it, but they might, now that it's safer, they might move someone to top lane for EXP. They could even put Enigma there and just have him bring the lane back and farm with Eidolon, so I don't know. Yeah, and looks like that is going to be the plan as ROTK has switched from the jungle. Uh, Lycanthrope is sufficiently leveled enough so that if Broodlings come into his lane, he can just kill them and kill the spiders. If he was a bit low leveled, then it looks like there's going to be a dive. Bottom, Zippo is going to take a lot of damage. Pops Windrun is going to escape. It looks like Mu is dancing dangerously close to the tower, but it's going to escape. But yeah, back to my point, uh, even if Bro Broodmother sends her spiders in the jungle, Lycanthrope is sufficiently leveled to just kill the spiders now. Yeah, the, we saw what happened right there. Two nukes, and all the spiders died. So, these spiders aren't going to do anything. Yeah. Lycanthrope can kill them, and if he leaves them in lane, they'll just get killed by Long DD and Zippo. And it <laughs> looks like Long DD is going for a Tranquil Soul Ring build. I'm not sure why he would still have that Ring of Protection if he hadn't already built a Basilius, so... Yeah, Burning just checking out his farm. Uh, 34 is 0, of course those are neutrals. Meanwhile, Invoker has 26 last hits. Mu, or Hal, is just going to be pressured back. He only has 17 CS. It's still a marvel that he managed to get 17 CS. So uh, that really speaks to the caliber of play that uh, Hal is. As looks like uh, Leshrac is going to pick up some more farms, so they are just going to split push. Leshrac at least has finished his arcane booth. Uh, Sand King is not finished anything, so just really... I don't know about Tongfu's decision making so far. I'd, I'll be completely frank. I think Tongfu made a horrible decision in laning, and I think before that they made a bad pick phase. I don't understand what they're trying to do. Well, I do understand, but it's just so desperate, and it just doesn't seem like it'll work. And watch, I'm, I guarantee this is going to happen now because now I said this. They're going to have some <laughs> unseen genius play, and I'm going to look like an idiot, but right now, I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, they're splitting up the farm with Leshrac and Sanking. At least now, I think, they're going to give Leshrac his farm, but he would have already had a couple of his components to the Bloodstone if he was going to go that build, if he just received all the farm. And meanwhile, Sanking in the jungle could pick up his dagger by around the 20-25 minute mark, where it could still be relevant. But looks like Awoke has roamed back, now that Broomer is sufficiently leveled enough so she can stay in lane. So I guess it's just levels, not about farm at this point. And it makes a little bit of sense. But still, you're not really getting too much farm on anybody. And meanwhile, you're leaving burning uninterrupted in the jungle, which is something you never want to have happen. Yeah, I think we've said this in pretty much every single cast that had DK in it. But <laughs> if there's burning in a game, you can't leave him alone. You just can't do it. Seriously. He will make you pay for it. And right now, they are 100% leaving him alone. And yeah, I mean, he should have Vlad's Oh, never mind. He does have Vlad's. It's on the curve. I take it back. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, this is the, the Vlad's timing is like seven to seven fifteen, and he got it right on time. So I stand corrected. Looks like Anti Mage is going around to top after having such a difficult time, but still, Edge Mage getting twenty three less hits in and of itself in the mid lane versus Invoker is quite impressive. But just right now in the bottom lane, these fires are just becoming free experience at this point. You don't really want to feed a team with powerful pushers like Beastmaster and the uh, Windrunner like Anthrope, uh, Enigma. So much experience, so I don't really know if Moves making the right decisions. I mean, he's keeping up in levels. But still, against a Duane when you were solo for about maybe one third of the time when Rubik wasn't there, you still want to be a, have a level advantage at the very least. Yeah, and I actually really like what Long did. You did kind of an old school thing that originated in China about a year or two ago, where you get one rank in Inner Beast, and usually that's done for a solo mid Beast Master so that you can control the runes better because it pushes up. But what he's doing is he's saying, hey, if I can help out my creeps just a little bit, maybe it'll keep it off the tower more. And I think that's why he did that. It's so that he won't be on his tower all the time against the Broodmother. And I like it. I think it's a good decision. Yeah, that Inner Beast build uh, was pioneered by the Chains. And actually, in, towards the later stage of Dodo 1, they only took one point to Call of the Wild, and then they maxed Inner Beast after the Axes, just to yeah, get that yeah. early pushing. So it's a really, really common build these days. As it looks like Kabu is maneuvering himself into position, the trees are just respawning. So <laughs> nice timing for this gang. As it looks like... There might be some trouble on the bottom lane, but these spires are just becoming absolute food. I'm not really too sure about uh, Moo's micro on this situation. But here comes a giant gang. Looks like Moo is going to dive. Will Kabu blink in with the burrow strike? No, he's just going to immediately back off. Zippo is going to take a bunch of edict damage. Here comes the roar. Sanchang is stunned. Dust of appearance is pop. Here comes Burning out of the jungle. Sanchang is going to be the first one to fall. One more chomp. Burning picks up first blood. Even more gold. But... Looks like Zippo is going to take the fall in her turn. Does Broodmother have the web up? No, she's out of mana. She will die if there isn't any more help to save her. Uh, looks like Ongidi is going to do his best. To, he's going to chop down the trees so his allies can reinforce a bit better. But nice burrow strike by Kabu. Going to save Broodmother for now. Yeah, and I think that, that was a great trade for DK. Yeah, burning first blood. They should be extremely happy for getting that bur first blood on burning. I like what DK is doing. They're just saying, all right, super, just follow down, follow around this anti-mage. Just make his life complete hell. And yep. Invoker is just going to do that to an anti-mage with phase booth. Going to completely control the lane so easily. And anti-mage will attempt to jungle, but with a just of health, it'll just be very, very slow going. And if he does do that, he can't venture back in the lane because Invoker will just be able to kill him. Yeah, if, if anti-mage blinks on you, if you're doing a QW Invoker, what you do is you immediately man up, you drop the cold snap, and you drop the EMP, and he will lose all of his mana. And then he can't do it anymore. Like, he did it once, and then he can't do it anymore. So how has to play super defensively, and that's not what you want to do if you're getting pressured. Looks like Burning is has around 75 CS. There is a smoke gank this early on, but I think Burning, does he have his ultimate up? There comes a bro strike and the Diabolity Edict. Nice chain stunning by the side of Tongfu. They're going to be able to kill Burning. Nicely done by Tongfu. This is exactly what they needed. It's, it's, it's a, a it's step a good in the step. right direction because he's got his metal up and he's got his boots up, which is like he's right on track for that good like throw farm. Like he's hitting all the items. I mean, so yeah, they kill him once. They need to kill him three more times. Yeah, that's true. If they're able to do that, they'll be able to delay his presence long enough. But I like what they did there. I think it's good. They just have to keep doing it. It's like there's going to be teleports to defend this bomb tower. So good for Roshan positioning along with the mid tower. As Super's going to teleport and leaving anti to farm, but anti has just been harassed so hard. You can just see not even 50 CS, which is still respectable farm, 44 CS, but not not for a Chinese anti-mage. You expect uh, a little bit more, but considering how hard he's been pressed, uh, you can't really blame him. And it looks like DK's going to mount a push on their own end, and Mongi, the only one putting to call our inner beast, is just going to get that boar up. And with the summons from the idols, they're going to be able to take down the star. Yeah, I do like that Tong Fu pressured bot lane, which gave anti mage some space to farm, but it's kind of a double sword, because now that Super TP is down there, they are going to get the tower, and they're probably going to go for two, and after that, they are going to go for Roche. Nicely done by Tong Fu, at least taking the mid tower, so giving them a nice gold, uh, gold advantage for now, but Burning is going to work on this tower. This tower is dying so rapidly, just from the right clicks, and will Burning pick up the last hit on this tower? Yes, he does, so that's just going to go a long way into whatever item he decides to go for. 1100 Golden Bank. Might go for trades, might go for an Ogre Club, but it looks like uh, Zippo might be engaged upon the split. Earth. Bailey misses, but Zippo is out of Windrun. 
Looks like Hao is going to go for a chase, but Hao does not want to dive too deeply. In fear of those reinforcing TPs, uh, Tongfu doing some nice counter pushing of their own. And meanwhile, DK looks like they're content to give up this tower in exchange for Roshan. I think if Hao hit him one more time and ulted him, he would have died. Or at oh. least it would have been very close, but you're right. you got to play safe. Nice if you're, done by Kabu. If he dies anti mage in this situation, the game just ends. It's over. So. And meanwhile, uh, <laughs> Kabu. <laughs> meanwhile, anti mage dies. We have Invoker going on last track, he's just gonna pull the tornado, and he'll go down. But meanwhile, while that was happening, there was a Roshan engaging as Kabu teleported back to the mid tower. As uh, he channeled the epicenter, got the burrow strike, managed to burn Burning's Aegis at the very least, even if he didn't get the Aegis steal. So that's gonna buy a little bit more time, but anti age dying is gonna put a hamper on Tong Fu's plan. But still, killing the Aegis on Burning is a nice step. And looks like Burning went for an immediate gem pickup. This is pretty it's, interesting. It's still up for me. He's still got his Aegis. I think oh. they killed Long DD. Oh, yeah, he still has his Aegis. I guess he got wolfed out of there fast enough. <laughs> I guess uh, I thought they killed Burning's Aegis at the very least. But uh, Epicenter, uh, only level 6 at this point. But it looks like Long D is going to be the next one to take the fall once again. Here comes the stuns and Drew Mother with the last hit. They're going to be able to pick off this bomb tower. So Tong Fu getting some nice push going. And they're going to get some map control this way. So, they're doing alright after the laning phase. The mid game, if they can get anti to farm, they are still have a good shot of taking this game. Yeah, I mean, their early game was fine, but this is the point that I was concerned about. Everything that I said negative about Tong Fu, I don't want to use the word negative, but what they needed to be doing is preparing for the mid game. Because this is when you get Enigma kicking into play, you get Beastmaster Wars, Invoker's gonna, he's like Superman in the mid game, you know? And Winrun is obviously going to be very good with Power Shot, Shackle Shot. She doesn't really need too much more. So this is when it's going to start to hurt for Tong Fu. Because all their heroes are really, really squishy. And they will be out team fight because they have three team fighters, whereas DK has five. Looks like Leshack went for a fast Ghost after just for that Lycanthrope. But it really speaks to how well DK farmed is, even though Tong Fu has four towers, DK only has two. And even though they picked off Roshan, DK still has a 2k gold lead just because they've been farming absolutely brilliantly. Yeah, Ch Chinese teams are second to none in terms of mechanics at least. And it looks like there's going to be an engaged top. Super gets initiated on. He's going to be cold snapped. Throws down the EMP. He's trying to man up on the anti-mage. It looks like he's going to get the anti-mage kill. Uh, Burning comes in. He's hitting Awoke. Awoke is going to fall down. Super picks up a double kill. And it looks like they're going to go on Sancheng. Sancheng's ghost scepterring away. And he's still standing there with Pulse Nova on. He is going to kill Super, but I'm pretty sure he's going to go down to Burning. He still has his wolf form up. Burning is going to be stunned and his ult will run out. So it looks like San Cheng should get away. I guess Super just uh, accepted the inevitable. He did not move at all. And will the wolves be summoned enough? Uh, San Cheng, will he go down? Is Burning going to summon the wolves? And now he's just going to push down the lane. Does not care about the tower as everybody's disconnected. No, that's. I thought that happened. Yeah. I thought that might have <laughs> happened. Because Super, Super just was like farming in front of a tower. Or Super just looked like he disconnected and Burning was farming in front of a tower. I, I was kind of confused. Yep, and you can just see from the Staff of Wizardry, Burning is going to go for the Necro Book. So I guess now with this pause, it's a good time to check out the items. As Enigma, pretty close to his mechanism, I surmise. Invoker picked up the Forest Staff, Beastmaster might go for a Necro Book himself, so Mass Necro Books might come into play very, very soon. Necro Book would make a ton of sense on Beastmaster this game. I don't think that they can defend a Tier 3 push against Double Necro Book and Inner Beast and Eidolons. Yeah, it's oh, definitely and it looks like they're all reconnecting right now. Um, I just want to check right now while we're still while we are still paused. What time are you at? 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Dear Lord, we're actually in the same spot for once. Oh my God! Somebody call an ambulance. This will never happen again. <laughs> I'm gonna go buy a lottery ticket or something. Yep. It's my lucky day. And just checking out anti -mage. oh, he's still a decent way away from that Battle Fury. So he's going to get pretty, you know, standard time for Battle Fury. Well, actually, it's a little bit late, but he's been it's pressed It's pretty on. late. He only has 60 or 58 CS, so he's just under so much pressure. And Bruno went for a very late Hannah Midas. Maybe in anticipation of Necrobook, or maybe just to get gold. This no, is what this, the P1 is This is kind of the new thing on Broodmother. I think Ferrari was the first major player to start doing it, and it, it's transferred into every scene. Like, you see some EU and NA players doing it, too. You open Midas on Broodmother, because you don't really need items early on him, you know? It doesn't matter. 
it's not like you fall behind when you're farming for Midas, and you're gonna stay in line and farm anyway, right? So why not get a Midas? It helps you out so much with your XP, which is already gonna be through the roof, that you'll, you'll be like four levels higher than anyone else on the map. And this is assuming you get it on a normal time. You didn't this game, but why not? Because you don't need any major items early, so... Yeah, that's definitely the case, and uh, one thing that the Southeast Asian Dota 1 people do is that even if it's 40 minutes in the game, they'll get Maya's to counter Necrobook, and I don't, I'm not personally a huge fan of that, but hey, I guess it's some way to beat that. Here comes Super with the EMP Tornado, sending anti Page spiraling up in the air, but he was able to get there before the mana all got drained, but anti Page only 800 HP, is not going to be able to survive too many of these engagements. That's going to come to play soon in the mid-game. Yeah, and the issue with the Battle Fury first build is I really thought he would go for a Necro Book because everybody on the other team can kill him. Sure, Battle Fury is nice for farming, but you gotta live, you know. And he has got his Battle Fury up. It's about four to five minutes late, but hopefully he'll be able to make a comeback if he's not pressured. Yep, looks like the Beastmaster took the gem away from Lycanthrope because Lycanthrope needed that extra mana f or an extra room for the Staff of Wizardry. And Long DD is still on his way. Looks like ROTK has finished the mechanism, has 1100 gold in the bank, so we'll see if he goes for fast BKB because right now there's nothing and can go through it. But at the very least, Sad King has picked up his own Blink Dower, so uh, if Leshrac can get a bit more farm, he has a point booster, so maybe Tong Fu can match up somewhat. They'll still be at a disadvantage in two fights, but maybe they'll get a couple kills if they get the right initiation. Now, if they get an initiation from Sand King and Lushrek and they instantly pick off two heroes, I think they'll be good to go. But it's going to be on Sand King's back, you know? It's yeah. all up to him. And of course, if Rubik is able to spell steal the ultimate from Enigma, <laughs> anything can happen. And it really is super easy to spell steal that from Enigma. It, it really is. Even if you get Black Hole, you just turn around and do it right after if you don't die. So. And looks like Winrar is going to go for Headdress, so I guess a pipe is going to be brewing very, very soon. As pipe against Leshrac and Sand King makes a lot of sense. But here comes the middle push. Long UD has the double damage route, so Fable will not prevent taking away too much of his damage. And the tower will fall. Here comes EMP Tornado on Awoke. He's going to be able to escape for now. Long UD is charging in. Can he get the roar off? No. But it looks like DK, they're con they are going to push for the next one. And anti Mage with... He's just going to farm up, but he can't really do anything to stop Anti Mage is like a creep right now. He can't yeah. do anything. Like They're going to go for tier 3, I think. Team fight. Yeah, <laughs> just ridiculous uh, pushing powers by DK as Necrobook level 2 fished on Lycan. And he's going to get Necrobook level 3 very, very soon. So this is going to be very, very brutal for Tongfu to deal with. You were talking about Enigma items. I'd like to see a Necrobook on him as well. So if we get one on him and... It, well, basically everybody. And it looks like there's going to be an initiation, but no, Tornado's going to miss. Looks like uh, DK still maneuvering themselves. Creep waves are dying quite fast, but Fable is going to be up for the next creep wave. Meanwhile, anti -Mage doing the best he can. is going to be pushing in as a battlefield and 1,000 gold to his name. So how is doing his best he can. And he's able to force the teleports back by DK. So nicely done by Tong Fu. Holding out for now, and every second they can get... Uh, they can hold out is just going to be more and more farm to that anti -Mage. An anti -Mage late game is gonna out-carry Lycanthrope if if they can go to the super late game. Yeah, ultra late game, I think he wins. But before ultra late, I think Lycan should win. Unless but... Burning goes Shadow Void. Yeah. <laughs> You're also forgetting Invoker, who's... A lot of people don't think of him this way, but I think of him as one of the best late game carries. Yeah, definitely one of the best uh, late you game get, carries. If you get that max levels and Hex and Aghanims up, you are a force to be trifled with. Yeah, that is definitely the case. So, uh, just checking out Super Sparm. He has 300 gold in the bank, finished the drums, and does he have anything on the courier? Looks like Necro 3 is going to be on its way, and I think that might be Super's ultimate orb. And here comes the Blink Dagger for the uh, for the Beastmaster, I think. Who's the Blink Dagger? I guess it's for the Enigma. Yeah, it's for the Enigma. So, Blink Black Hole. Initiation on bot lane. It looks like Long Disease is going to get gone on. He gets four staff backwards. Shackle Shot Latching, too. Super stealing so much damage, SK's just gonna fall immediately. They're turning around on the woke, but no, they choose to pursue Mu, who is backing up, but there's a gem, they can see him, so I don't think he's gonna live. Malefus is gonna stun him, and Enigma's gonna get the last hit. Yeah, that was complete out positioning by DK, out of position by Tongfu. As Antuage is gonna do the best he can, he's gonna be pushing the top tower all the while, 
but here comes Burning, just gonna thwart his attempts to get that. He's already trying to get the way to cut off the anti-mage path. Baits out the blink, is gonna pop the Necrovoke to try to drain as much mana as possible. He drains, but looks like how he's gonna be able to escape. Like, can throw up a little, uh, not able to catch up. But still, Ultimate Orb finished on Super, Blink Dagger finished on Enigma. Zippo is working Illusion. on... What is Zippo working on? Let me take a look. He's working on, uh... He's getting drums. Oh. Right, that makes sense. Double drums on Chinese scene. Always, always a pretty standard play these days. Man, I saw some Chinese pub game that had Yapits in it, which is why I was watching it. One team had four drums. Not even kidding. <laughs> Were they all like third. soul pushing or just constant, constant pop? Constant usage of the drums. It's a good item. Lots of stats. They were. It, it was basically in team fights. It was drum after drum after drum after drum. But still, that's uh, oh, it's a woke. lot of stuff. And Awoke's gonna go down to Invoker. He melts in like half a second. Brood has picked up the Orchid, but uh, with the Nigma gonna stay far back, Invoker is gonna stay far back. So I guess the only thing he can do is try to silence a long DD or burning. But burning has the Aegis and he has Necro three. Meanwhile, Necro one is finished on the Beastmaster long DD. And how is this gonna be pushed away? So. Tong Fu is going to find this very, very difficult, and at the very least, Slash Jack has a soul booster, so if you can get a Bloodstone up, you will be able to tank some of the damage, but still, if ROTK can get a Black Hole, this game is probably over. Yeah, if ROTK Black Hole's anti-mage, and he was trying to before, but he didn't have a Blink Dagger, the game ends. Zul will just be able to take the tower without fear of split push, and that's why they're pushing top lane, so that they don't have to worry about their towers. Yeah, so... They're gonna push the top lane, meanwhile Brutal are doing the best to try to get some towers on the bottom lane. The tower will probably take the fall, but not before this tier 3 tower is in danger. Here comes the EMP Tornado, or just the EMP as looks like Awoke is gonna get Tornado and Cold Snap. One hit away is just gonna be able to skip for now, but still. Here comes the Sand King Epicenter at the very least. Kabu takes a huge amount of damage from the Necrobooks bursting, and he dies in an instant. Looks like Sand Shang is trying to get in the middle of everything, trying to pulse out as much damage as possible. But it looks like the heroes on DK are just too tank. Buybacks and Black Hole was not even used and ROTK is going to maneuver himself back position. And the top barracks are taken and Tong Fu are not going to be able to catch up with the retreating DK. And Roshan should be up right about now. Yep. They should be able to absolutely get Roshan. Sure they'll have to fix bot lane first, but it's not a huge deal, you know? They have so, so good counter pushing. Yeah, so <laughs> this is just looking... Like, complete outplay by DK, and outpicked as well, because DK just is steamrolling, and once DK gets their tank items, they just stay in the fight for so long, and Antipage can't do anything about it at this point. Has 2,700 gold, so we'll see what he decides to go for. Probably should just go for Manta. Yeah, I would like to see Manta, but it looks like the Dyer are actually going to try to ninja rush on. This would be cool if they could do it, but, um, oh no, those aren't Beastmaster Axes, those are Rubik Axes. Ah, oh, that's cute. <laughs> you know, you know when, I, I don't know if it's been patched out, but when Rubik steals Beastmaster's boar, he does a Beastmaster's voice acting. It's like, uh, be my vision, or whatever it is when he uses them. And it looks like ROTK is going to go in. Is he going to? No, he's going to get silenced before the black hole and instantly go down. He doesn't stand a chance. We're going to see a roar out on Sancheng. He's taking damage from Axes. Super's in the middle of the fray. He's focusing on Sancheng. He's going to get stunned up. Uh, finally, Sancheng is going to go down, Anti-Mage blinks out, and this looks like it's going to be a 2 for 1, although they are pursuing Mu. I don't think they have the means to catch him, and they don't. He's just going to TP out. ROTK does buy back, DK wants towers and they want him now, and with Leshrac down for 35 seconds, there goes a lot of the anti-push that, and a lot of the teamfight as well, uh, that uh, Tongfu can muster up. So if Enigma gets the black hole, because he did buy back, then it's just going to be extremely difficult to overcome for Tonku. Probably going to be GG if ROTK can manage to land the Black Hole. Even if you can't, if they push the tower before Lashak respawns, it'll just be so difficult to stop DK. And ROTK has Blink Dagger Black Hole. Or, he doesn't have Black Hole. He used it in that last engagement. Looks like there's going to be engaged in EMP Tornado as Awoke is just taking EMPs to the face all day long. And here comes the push. Long D has another double damage. My god. And looks like Sand King is going to go with the epicenter burrow strike combination. They're going to be able to kill Super and ROTK. Nicely done by Tongfu. Looks like uh, anti -Mage picks up another kill. Burning takes the fall as well. What a team fight for Tongfu. I was not expecting that to happen, but what team play. The team fight was like 95% Kabu. Got a wonderful burrow strike epi. Yeah, and Leshrac respond in the nick of time to follow up with a lot of pulse nova damage. And in conjunction with the Fable and anti -Mage with the Battle Fury Cleave. That just team melted. fight just melted. 
So DK, they're going to be caught a little bit on the back foot for now, uh, but they're probably just going to wait for our DK to get Black Hole, because he did not have it. I guess he used Dev Roshan and it got cancelled. Yeah, I thought that that fight was going to go a lot more in DK's favor, but without Black Hole, it, it does appear like they actually need it. So, Tonic 3 did manage to get their items up on their heroes that they need, so... The only issue is, though, they're already down on racks and against the Lycanthrope, so... That is true, but uh, Team H is one of the best split pushers in the game. He has the Manta style, and meanwhile, Leshrak should be able to pick up the Bloodstone soon uh, if he manages to get maybe 600 more gold. Uh, so if he gets a Bloodstone, he'll just be able to stay in fights and start accumulating charges. And he's approaching level 16, so Pulse Nova will start to do a heck amount of damage. Meanwhile, Rubik has a headdress. May gonna go for a pipe of himself. Sand King has, is going to try to go for a Veil, but still, besides the Intimation, nobody on Tongfu is firing very well. Honestly, I think I'd like to see Leshrac just go straight for a BKB. I think BKB will help him out a lot more than a Bloodstone charge as well, you know? Because fights are going to be so short anyway, I don't think the mana reason is going to be a huge thing. And it's not like you're winning and getting Bloodstone charges up, you know, and like really building them up. They just need to win a couple more fights and hold on. So I think BKB would be the right choice. Uh, we'll see what he decides to go for. He very, you know, he probably will get a bloodstone, but I'd like to see a BKB. <laughs> Meanwhile, Brumlaw just staying in the base knows that probably DK has smoked up. As Brumlaw has 3,400 gold in the bank, and DK smoked up all the while trying to catch a Brumlaw, but they might be able to get a mid lane engagement. No, it looks like they're just going to retreat for now. No, they're maneuvering themselves back into position. Here comes the EMP turning on Kabu. If they can kill Kabu, there goes a huge component that team fight. Kabu immediately takes a fall. Midnight Pulse being used as well. Antimage doing best. Here comes a roar up on Hal. Hal has the Aegis. No, looks like he lost the Aegis as he did die. And this is going to be Rax because Mantimage doesn't have buyback. And neither does Sand King. Yeah, no buybacks. This will be a miracle if they can hold it, but... <laughs> it's not going to be. I, I'm trying to figure out how they can do it. Broodmother just got a basher. Maybe he'll get bashes on every hit. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I think it's possible. As uh, I guess the courier is going to just arrive in time. Leshrac did not finish the Bloodstone in time. They're just going to use the Fable cooldown on the Hawk. So that's going to be pretty bad for them. So they can't even anti-push for now. As Hex is going to go immediately on the Leshrac. This Milrax is going to take the fall very, very fast. And... Antimage is still dead for another 20 seconds, so top, or the middle, top, or middle range racks are going to take the fall as well. Can't speak anymore. Yeah, that happens when you cast a lot. <laughs> or at least to me, I don't know about to you, but. Yeah. I think that they're just going to back off and go for the bot, as opposed to just going straight for the throne, which, in all honesty, they probably could have taken, but play it safe, you know, why not? Yeah, I guess they realized Antimage was responding, Sand King is back, and considering that... Kabu managed to land a perfect episode in the last two fight. I guess they don't really want to test the waters again. But Sanchez is going to get initiated. Mon Midnight Pulse and Bernie is going to be sent up in the air for now. As here comes Stun Ice Wall. Episode going to do a huge amount of damage. But Rubik's going to be next on the fall. Kabu is going to die as well. And DK is just steamrolling Tongue for his next engagement. As anti Age is just going to be far in the top lane. He's no, there's, he knows there's nothing he can do without the proper initiation. And DK are going to be able to take this bomb barracks. And probably the game. So DK are going to... 3-0 the series over Tongfu, unexpected to say the least, but really, really a nice treat to watch if you're a DK fan. Yeah, I'm surprised at Tongfu's play. It's, like I said, was not bad. It wasn't even mediocre. It was pretty good. It's just DK's play was amazing. This is I the would, DK. I would have to say that it was amazing. This is the DK you saw in Dota 1. And they yep. finally seem like they're putting it together. And going to the National 2, uh, if the European teams are watching these replays, considering that DK's been very, very shaky, they might have been taking DK lightly. But now, Burning looks like he's in tip-top shape, and I think... <laughs> I've always said Super's that Burning... has been destroying people, too. Yeah, I've always said Burning is just like... Uh, you know... That guy who always wins, and is really, really good. You know? My friend describes Burning as having the six-finger advantage. He's got that extra finger, he can micro that much better. Yeah. But, uh, I guess anyway. the most appropriate analogy Looking forward would be... to the international, too, so... Yeah. Most appropriate analogy would be, uh, Burning's like Bill Russell, because he always finds a way to win with Ehome, with DK, and maybe with the international, too, because he didn't... He wants that international one prize money for himself, so... DK taking it in a 3-0 clean sweep of over Tong Fu. Nicely done by DK. So... They're gonna have to watch out, and New York Tong Fu is gonna have to come up with some more game plans as their last track picks have not been working out, to say the least. Nope, not at all, so.
best of luck to both of these teams in the international, and I'm glad that we got to see them play. Yep, so thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for the international two coming up uh, in a couple more days. You can catch out the coverage on Join Dota, DotaCommentaries.com, uh, Dota2.com for the Dota2 blog. And I'm probably going to put up like maybe a vlog of my international two predictions. And as always, thank you so very much to Shred Kid. And check him out on his channel, Shred Kid Dota, all one word, on YouTube. Uh, it's also in my little channel box, so you can just get the immediate link. So he's going to be putting out videos when he can, pretty soon. He's a busy guy, but... Yeah, I think I'm putting one out tonight on, tonight on how to roam successfully in a pub. Hopefully so. Like to see you guys there. Thanks for tuning in. Yep, so thanks for watching, and have a fantastic day.